Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here again, and look who we've got on the couch. I like to call him our resident rock star. I'm oh, serious. Yeah. <laughs> Steve oh, Spector. Well, well, that's quite an introduction. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. Absolutely. No, Patricia, we're you. thrilled to have you. Thanks. Absolutely. You know, we all have gotten to know you, go, gone to so many of your um, performances. So just happy to talk about that and you as far as a resident of Hopkinton. So, Thank uh, you. I met Appreciate Steve when I knew nothing about his music career. Oh, I knew okay. you as my daughter's soccer coach. All right. Well, those are some. Those are definitely some fun times. Um, your daughter Cam and my daughter Olivia were third or fourth grade when yeah. we started the travel teams and um, I do have a lot of music you know endeavors going on over the years which are I'm grateful for all that and all the support but a lot of my fondest memories are coaching Olivia and my son Michael and all their yeah. friends and meeting all their families in, in that platform so yeah. yeah Cam was a good player we <laughs> gave a lot of playing time as yeah. I recall so that was good <laughs> No, no um, those are some wonderful memories. So, yeah. Well, for so, those of us who don't don't know you, you've tell us a little bit about your your background in Hopkinton, just yeah. moving here and how long in town yeah. and no, where but, you're from. Um, sure. Um, so my wife Dawn and I both uh, grew up in Framingham. Oh, we okay. went to Framingham North High. Uh, she's gonna kill me okay. for saying this, but um, she was the president of our high school class for four years. So that, wow. that, that I had to really step up my game for Dawn to to, <laughs> to ask to, her out. Yeah. That was big. And, uh, it took a while, but it's just it's paid off. And I, could be and you went grateful. when they were still in North and the South. Exactly, so that's ah. yeah. you know, dating myself. But, <laughs> so, um, so Dawn and I got married in 1989. We lived for about five years in Westboro mm -hmm. until 96, and um, we saw the opportunity to move over to Huckleberry Road oh. um, at, at around when they were beginning that neighborhood, yeah. sort of the yeah. early phases of Huckleberry Road. That has been an amazing storybook family life for us. So, you know, the, the Halloweens on Huckleberry Road are legendary, yeah. going around with the kids. And, well, we were on Saddle Hill and moved in about the same time. Yeah. We moved in 97. But yeah. Huckleberry was, n was newer. I mean, it's still it was, developed, yeah. yeah. yeah still and uh, we've got some lifelong friends on that street. There's been, we've been there for 21 years this wow. month. Wow. And, yeah. um, it's been a great run and we want to stay there. You know, mm -hmm. some folks want to, uh, uh, for different situations, they yeah. move on and right. downsize or whatever, or mm -hmm. move to the Cape. We, we really lo love living in Hopkinton. We mm -hmm. feel we'll, uh, both of us uh, are part of the community, and we're, we appreciate well, your, that. Your kids grew up here, graduated from Hopkinton High. Yep. Yeah, They've how many and what ages are they? What, yeah. yeah, so um, Olivia is my oldest. Um, mm -hmm. She is, uh, she went to, graduated 2012 from Hoppington High. Mm -hmm. um, abundance of friends, they piled, oh, piled yeah. over our house in the basement, which mm -hmm. uh, those are good memories too. Mm -hmm. And uh, she went to UMass Amherst, okay. uh, graduated a year ago, and she's working in uh, the Seaport District right oh, now. Fun. A sales job, she Woo. started a few weeks ago. Good. After about a year at TJX, and mm -hmm. um, she's moving on, so she's, she's on a good track. Mm -hmm. um, and you like, share some exciting stuff about your son. Yes, yeah. uh, Darlene. So um, my son Michael is a sophomore at UMass Amherst. That's my whole family, Don and I also. So we are okay. UMass oh Amherst family. That's yeah, great. Good, you know, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, good, fees, great uh, school. A great value, obviously, great and a great right, experience. Exactly. And that, great that education. Western Mass area is wonderful, mm -hmm. um, Pioneer Valley and everything. So Michael is a sophomore, <clears throat> uh, going to be a junior at UMass Amherst, and he um, is doing a lot of singing and performing. He's in the doo-wop shop, which is a, a very well-known a cappella group mm -hmm. um, at UMass. <clears throat> they performed at the White House a couple years ago. Oh, wow. Oh, my. They're amazing. If you go on Facebook, they have like 38,000 likes. And, wow. Um, yeah. They just put up a video that had... Um, going through Taco Bell, 11 oh. guys in a van, <laughs> oh. ordering, instead of ordering food, I had like a whatever taco, they right. had 11 guys singing it, singing their order in acapella, and, wow. and the, the gentleman on the other end, his name is Antoine, you have to see the video, it's on, uh, it's amazing, but the, he, he's got a lot of really good musical endeavors, he's a, he's a heck of a songwriter, very deep um, mm. and mature lyrics, and uh, he's got some really good traction, and He's spending the summer in New York City, wow. uh, in Manhattan, with mm -hmm. a with a uh, doing a, an internship with a record label. So he's that's he's, awesome. on, a he's on a music on. career. That's yeah. what he's he's pursuing. Right? Yeah. Cool. yeah. So that's exciting. Work. Well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And then you were telling me talent. about a train trip he's taking to Philadelphia, and that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So um, he's 
he's probably not going to want me to tell you this, but <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, mean, happy, I'm happy to do it. So he can't get H game in New York, so it's okay. He'll never know. He'll never, <laughs> know. He'll never know. So he <laughs> he got invited to to try out for The Voice. Um, he's very versatile. He's, he sings a lot of classic rock. He sings mm -hmm. and very soulful. And um, you know we, we've we've done a little investigating. And anyway, he's going to uh, has a sort of a second tier try out for The Voice on on uh, Monday in Philly. So we got to hop a train from Manhattan to Philly for a night and mm -hmm. meet some folks and sing four or five songs and see how that oh, goes. Yeah. We'll Keep see. our fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just the experience, you know, sure, who knows where indeed. it's going to go. But, Absolutely. Right. So we're really well, sort, of, sort of rooting for him, but not, not overly Yeah. Sorry. It's a great yeah. segue to what you do now. Uh, I realize you have a lot of things going on, but... Um, but you weren't always in so music. Best right now, best known for being the rock star. <laughs> right. well, I will say this, oh, thank you, and I appreciate that, but I gotta tell you, there is a, an abundance and a ton of musical talent in this town. Yeah, I mean, yeah, rattle is. off, you know, Barbara Kessler, her husband right. Phil, mm -hmm. Antoniatis, their mm -hmm. daughter Amelia. Yeah. I mean, there's, I don't even wanna leave anybody up, but they're some of our closest friends in town, and we've, oh, we've yeah. collaborated, and, and, and my son Michael, and uh, their, their daughter Amelia have performed the, together at mm -hmm. Hard Rock Cafe, but, there are so many performers, and uh, I've been for, uh, I'm yeah. fortunate to, in my 20s, have connected with some amazing musicians in the Metro West area. So mm -hmm. some of these um, friends of mine, who I you know, I'm still in the band with now, Hot Acoustics, mm -hmm. um, they they're they're around 60 years old, and they've been performing for 40 years, and they're just so seasoned. And yeah. So I was able to connect with that network, of, you know. And and a lot of them played with some really cool bands or met people that. Like see on record labels, you know, Yeah, I think there's a couple of. Um, <laughs> sometimes I wonder some of the guys I play with, how did they not make it big? Mm -hmm. Maybe you know? chose, yeah. because it's a hard lifestyle to be big. It just, well, it's hard to get there, right? Yeah, you it's need a so break. You, yeah, need, you need that you need really break. big break. Um, I can tell you, uh, you know, a couple guys in my band, um, our drummer Ray and our, my band member, uh, uh, guitar player Tim Levitt, mm -hmm. Ray, Ray Elwood, and, and Tim, and Carter's the other yeah. um, members. It's the four of us, but. But a couple of the guys were in a band uh, called Ice that used yeah. to open for Aerosmith back yep. in the day. Wow. And their, their lead guitar player, um, David Amato, yeah. is in REO Speedwagon yep. now for wow. the last 20 years. He's their sort of second lead guitar player. He's an amazing musician. I've met, met him a couple times. I don't know him well. But, but so yeah. there's a, you know, whenever REO Speedwagon comes around, they usually go and hang with them, you know, with Sticks and Journey and all the other you rock. Do I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I personally don't, you know, get to do that as much, but, but, we have these sort of, we're, we're kind of sort of by one the step. The Kevin Bacon. Yeah, <laughs> one degree, one of, one degree of separation. You just get all the way in. That <laughs> no, it's, it's been great because it's been a really good balance over the years, as I was talking about earlier, being able to stay within the community, having a normal sort of working life, mm -hmm. family life, coaching the kids, meeting neighbors and friends, and then having this sort of outlet, which is a little bit more than a hobby, but it's, yeah. uh, it's been really some fun. Well, Steve. Tell me, I, did I read somewhere that you, when did you get into music? Was it, um, were you always a musician? Like your son is, you know, clearly um, on that path? Or? Well, again, I, I'm just thinking of some clever stories I can in, interject here. So <laughs> senior year in high school, my wife, at, well, I had a crush on Dawn at the time, but she had no interest in me at the, the president. time. President. The president. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll there call was, him Madame there President. Was a, there was a talent <laughs> show, senior year in high school. And I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm kind of a late bloomer as compared to some of the other people I've played with, like Barbara Kessler and, mm. and other folks in town, Amanda in the face. I mean, when they were 14, they're, they're, um, you could just see it, but I was a late bloomer. So, so I was probably 17 years old, tried out for the talent show at Framingham North High. And uh, I got up there with, I think I played a song by the band Bread, mm. and it was a snoozer. Mm -hmm. And I played along to a recording. It was like, I'm really sorry. I mean, so, so Donna and her team gonged me. I, I just, mm -hmm. so, so by the time, <laughs> I just didn't make it. I, I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve ah. it. So I, I got to college, met up with a guy named Big Bob, from upstate New York. Um, huge, six foot five guy, and he played the Grateful Dead. And and um, for a couple of years, we sort of got our legs under us. And I could sing pretty well, and and he could jam really well. So we came up with this sort of three-piece acoustic act that kind of took us through college. Mm. So that's kind of where things got oh. kind of launched. And yeah. Jim Croce, oh, Eagles, Crosby, yeah. Stills, Nash. Oh, you play my kind of stuff. I, the first time I heard you perform was at the Hopkinton Country Club, and you were acoustic guitar mm. at a brunch. Right. Yes, and it was like, I, it was just amazing how oh, you, you just captivated everyone, and 
I just loved your music from then on. Well, Thank I get you. to nice. declare myself a hot acoustics groupie. Yeah. All of them you, have, to, you are. Yes. To the casino. <laughs> Tell us who. I brought, I brought my Connecticut peeps with uh, me. You brought about 20 people with you <laughs> to uh, yeah. Foxwoods, right? Oh. We had a gig at Foxwoods a couple summers ago, and it was a really... <laughs> That was a lot of fun and uh, a late night, as I remember, too. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we were planning to spend the night, and it was like, okay. That meant a lot, because, well, that, that was, was right so in the middle of summer, and, and we haven't heard from him since, but, but we've got, that's okay, but uh, <laughs> we, we've had some gigs at the Mohegan Sun and, like, some corporate functions there, yeah. and over the years, we, we opened for Eric Burden and the Animals in 2003, wow. and the mm. same year, we also played at the Boston Marathon finish line, and got interviewed on WZLX by the comedian Steve Sweeney, which was wow. kind of a trip. And um, so there's been a lot of fun stuff over the years. And but you know, so I, shout out um, it's Saturday coming up, it's coming up next tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah, on your June gig list. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit. Of, I got I got some fun stuff. Uh, sorry, I just put my microphone. The, tomorrow night at Fireflies is a really fun uh, event. Every couple three months we play there. Uh, hot acoustics does mm -hmm. so um usually packed jam, yeah great dancing yeah it's just a fun environment and a good vibe there and share with people the kind of music you guys play because i know it because yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah um so like at a fireflies gig tomorrow night we'll play everything from clapton almond brothers steely dan uh, tom petty eagles um Little River Band, but then we'll do some John Mayer, we'll do some Matchbox 20, we do some Goo Goo Dolls. So I'd say 70s, 80s, 90s is sort of the sweet spot. And um, we focus on songs that are maybe not as typical. So we, we wouldn't necessarily play Johnny Be Good or a predictable song like that, but we'll do something like, well, they're doing that song, like Undone by the band The Guess Who. It's, mm -hmm. Not everybody knows that, but it's a snappy. Oh, it's mm -hmm. a it, it's, so there's a so it's kind of dance music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Fireflies has been like a unique venue too for you because there are times where you're playing the whole band out there and it's a dance party, and there are times where you're playing in the back in the and it's and it's a stick It's yeah. more laid back. You can bring your kids. I know we've done that a couple times where we just sit back, Those we get great, an appetizer, yeah. have a couple drinks, and then bring go home. You know, as and it's an earlier mm -hmm. time too. Yes. The garden, the patio. The garden the garden. patio. It's, it's like seven and one versus nine, starting at nine. Yeah. I, I'm know, old. If, I'm if, you're a, if you ask my wife, Donna, um, as you mentioned, the, the, the coffee house, or the, um, the coffee houses, but the, the Sunday brunches at Hockey yes, Country yes, Club, yes, which yes. I did that mm -hmm. for a few years, I really, those, that's where my core is. That's sort of where mm -hmm. I started from those UMass Amherst days. So, mm -hmm. so I've been accused by some of my current bandmates as being the ballad guy because I'll sing like a, <laughs> yeah. a sappy love song or that's something. What I but, like. I, but I really <laughs> love those, that, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. Um, and, but we'll also do The Who and we'll do some, you know, Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, and we, we sprinkle in some original songs as well. But, but the, the, if, you want, if you want to know the truth, as we're, I mean, we're on the same age bracket here. Those acoustic tunes with a just stripped down with one or two yeah. harmonies, and then it's mm -hmm. everyone. And it, I really appreciate those gigs a lot. So. It's just yeah. very I relaxing and stuff like that. It's a, and I like going to those. Yeah. Probably my favorite ones. To mm -hmm. But there's follow. a time and a place where you yeah, bring where the whole. Want to bring a sweat? Yeah, people want to just <laughs> cut loose, so you bring. You know. And then you said you have another gig on Sunday. I do, darling. Yeah. So um, we were, in, you know, fortunate to be invited to headline the. I think it's the seventh annual Buzz Off. It's one. The That's one the one at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, so it, oh. it is at Gillette Stadium. Oh, Not a bad venue, okay. you know. We don't play right, too right, often, right. but <laughs> we happen to be playing there this Sunday. We were able to work it into our world tour. Cool. Um, we to our world tour. <laughs> yeah, so mostly in Metro <laughs> West. <laughs> Well, that's part of the world. Uh, <laughs> so, so what is the buzz off? And because I'm going to share about what the buzz off. Yeah, is. that's good. Why, right. why don't you go ahead? Well, so, I know. I, I, mean, um, I know because my nephew's. Um, wife is her second year of getting buzzed off. Okay. Oh. Um, it's a very personal thing for her and so she actually gets her head shaved wow. um, and it's for children's cancer and um, so a shout out to Mary McLeod and not right. the one from Hockington. Oh. <laughs> it's hard to have two friends and um, it's neat because they really make it into a festival and people coming out and really That's supporting so it. Um, a lot of the Patriots players show up. Right. Um, and Brock, yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, yes, and this, uh, that's a good uh, kind of handoff. So th this year they're, they're incorporating a, a bit of a music element. And um, Andrew Mersey is going to play from 
10 to 11, uh, Evan Goudreau, yep. mm. uh, who's a very talented, yep. uh, and I played, got to play with him a few times. He's, he's an amazing Jeez. player. He's going to play for about an hour after that, and then Hot Acoustics plays from like 1 to 2.30, give or take. Yeah. And there's going to be lots of vendors. Rob yeah. Gronkowski is oh. definitely Ooh. kind of on the Gronk. docket. He, we're going to try to get him on stage with us. Oh. Oh. You know, he's, he's usually not shy about that stuff. Right. So. You get him dancing. <laughs> get him dancing. Ask him what song he wants to sing with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll have plenty of time to get that ready. Yeah. We're going to meet him yeah. tomorrow. But awesome. um, that's a, we're very excited about that, and obviously for a great cause, and, yeah. and um, we're happy I to support it. that. Yeah. I love that. Uh, and then, oh. I mean, Obviously, that's you know very much a charitable outreach. But you do a lot of community events too, like with Timlin coming up. Yes. Um, you do concerts on the Common. You're doing the and I now a replay of what the 300th was with the Family Day on the uh, 16th well, of September. You did the 300th, and yeah, now you're doing it awesome. again. Yeah, that was a that was awesome amazing. Night. I mean, that, amazing night? that was. I mean, I. I I, I get I don't get too nervous too often. I, I do with the, the three, you oh, know, no. Charlie's <laughs> Angels. We got the Charlie's oh. Angels here, and I'm, I'm oh. trying to contain myself. But but, but um, I'm that was a big that was, that 300th anniversary was yeah. really a big event. I mean, there, you, to look out on the upper field behind the middle schools and see what I was told was seven or eight thousand people. It was mm -hmm. just a see Fear right people. right before the, the fireworks and the fireworks ended, and then we as soon amazing. as the fireworks ended, we yeah. played. Um, um, Smoke from a distant fire. Ooh, I know. That was our next song after yeah. that, which I thought we, we we did select that intentionally. Yeah. But but that was a, that was an amazing event. So that uh, we're getting, so we have some other events coming up this summer and. Um, so you're playing again at the big fireworks play in September, September. 16th. Right. So but then you have. Like, so yeah, probably back it up. So yeah. so certainly the the Timlin race, and I mm. I got to say you're you, there's just so we're so lucky to be attached to all these events, you know. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is about our eighth annual. Um, it's the fourteenth annual Timlin race. They've raised about a million and a half dollars for ALS research. Mm -hmm. uh, Abby Rosenberg, Dave Kruger, all you know. There's a slew of volunteers. Yeah. In amazing yeah. events. Abby's mm -hmm. been great. Yep. And um, so Hot Acoustics will be playing the 17th of June for that in the morning. And then uh, high school band Fuse is gonna open for us. I wanna give them a little shout out. They're really talented. Mm -hmm. um, this is like your seventh year playing? Timlin? Seventh or eighth yeah. year. And uh, it's, it's again, a sea of people, you know, and, and we're proud to be part of that. And, um, and then we have in July 30th, we're playing on concerts in the Common. Mm -hmm. oh, Sunday, nice. five to seven, a bunch of people playing. And, and just to back up, that is a gem in town that we have a summer concert series on Sundays and bring in these wonderful I agree. bands like mm -hmm. yourself and it's just a nice well, family. Yeah. You spend the whole day because Zoom Farmer's Market will kick in so that's sort of right. like the beginning of the Sunday activity on the Common and then that goes to 4 or 5 or something I think. Yeah, and, then the, and then the concert so that's going to be so exciting that you're going to draw a crowd. Mm -hmm. You know uh, Laura Hansen of the Parks and Rec has kind of taken the lead on the Sunday concerts and it's become very much a signature event for the summer for them mm -hmm. um, and for Parks and Recs as a gathering place, whether it's going to have the farmer's market be a lead-in, different children's events are gonna be lead-ins and things like that. And they're trying to make it so, because it used to be a bunch of seniors would show up with their lawn chairs yeah. and, and that was it. And, and, yeah, was it. Cute, and now they're trying, and so each week they're trying to have very much of a distinct, different demographic of music, yeah. and draw different audiences, draw different families, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a Love it's it. a great event, and we always always pray for good weather because it's yeah, always yeah. Be, you know tropical. But we always plan for good weather. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and uh, it was a little dicey last year, but we, we were able to play, and and so we're looking forward to that. And then um, we're hoping the weather's getting it all out of the system I now. Know, today's I know, so the July or end of the month. Yeah, so we have great. the Timlin race. Um, well, certainly this weekend. You know, tomorrow night. Fireflies Sunday Gillette. Uh, at Gillette, Gillette. Um, and July 30th on the Town Common, and then mm -hmm. September 16th at the you know the, the Hoppington Celebration, which yeah. I guess is going to be yeah. some other folks you know other other folks playing there too. So something like the Gillette, how did they find you? So there, uh, my band Hot Acoustics had a had a uh, a show at Framingham Country Club last couple of them last year, and as a, a, a woman. Uh, Cynthia Canigliaro, who who um, has it's her friend who is mm -hmm. sort of running the buzz uh, the buzz off. Mm -hmm. um, it's the owners of the Cumberland Farms family. They're very yeah. very nice. Mm -hmm. So and their son had uh, <coughs> cancer and he's doing much better. He's mm -hmm. doing they're great from now. South they are. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So we got connected that way, and um, you know we were able to pull it together. We usually don't do a gig the next day after a night gig, but um, I'm it's a little July. hoarse now because we had a rehearsal the other last night. <laughs> you know, so my radio voice this morning, but but um, yeah, it's, it, it'll be in the parking lot. There's going to be five or six thousand people going there through you know tons of vendors and stuff. So it, it's. I think it's going to be a wonder, wonderful experience, and hopefully we'll rub some elbows with some of the, the players, you know? Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. So, Darlene, you got some um Well, tonight's graduation, events? so by the time this show airs, there's a whole other class yeah. done. Right. And, you know, um, that's in 2017. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. we just had prom, so my daughter went to prom yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Or just have and stuff the like grand that. Grand you know, so, years. You know, I guess I guess after tonight that she's technically a senior, senior. Yeah. and stuff right. going into that. But um, you know, it's weird. Last week was like running around. The last couple weeks, you started to see like more yard sales popping up. Like, right. um, oh, well, the Lions Club had one where you went right. round and round right. and to different right. homes and stuff like that. And then I know St. Paul's has a rummage sale. I think, I think rummage is a really funny word. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, old it's an old fashioned New England <laughs> rummage sale. So there starts now, and then next weekend rummage. is, you know, uh, <laughs> next week starts St. John's rummage sale. Right. Yeah, that's a huge, that's and like that's a little huge. mini mall. I mean, they set it's, up. It is a five day rummage sale. I it's mean, huge. It's, it's huge. huge. <laughs> I went to the first time last year, and it was, it's huge. Yeah. But I think um, one of the, you know, there's so much that focuses on running around the town. And one of the events that actually happens tomorrow is, and we've had Deb Thomas on the show before, uh -huh. was um, she talked about the Hockington Girls on the yep. Run. And this year, not only does Hockington have their Girls on the Run team, and this is for third graders through eighth grade girls, um, they're hosting the 5K for the entire greater Boston out of Hockington High School tomorrow. Oh, wow. And so it's not just it's Hockington Girls, girls but it's the whole yeah. greater Boston region is being okay, done. So and a shout out to Deb Thomas. Be careful driving around, because there's going to be a lot of little girls running. <laughs> Good. Um, and I guess um, the three of us actually decided to wear a, at least a tiny bit of orange. We're all wearing orange. I'm and <laughs> I didn't get the memo here. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, well, it, it's, well it's, it's, I it's, didn't know what the significance national, was. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's National Anti-Gun Violence Day. Mm -hmm. And um, the significance hit again home yesterday for me when um, one of my friends from college sent me a message that... Um, one of her old co-workers was murdered. It was another murder-suicide. Mm -hmm. We had one in my neighborhood a few years ago. We know of others in the community that it's just it's crazy. Such lives so everywhere. there's, um, you can, people are wearing orange today. If you see this, it's because of, you know, anti-gun violence. There's hashtag wear orange, and there's at um, mom's demand. So if you take a picture of yourself and post it up someplace, um, they're being collected and stuff about moms taking stands against gun violence. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I actually belong to the Sandy Hook group because, mm. you know, again. Mm -hmm. uh, but on a, on a less somber note, um, Touch Truck is coming up, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a blast. Yeah, that, yeah. So what is about the Touch a Truck? I've seen the signs. I haven't ever gone to that before. You touch a truck. So the okay. thing okay. is. There's got to be more to it. It's a big truck. <laughs> Oh, they bring, you get to climb on them and, and that kind uh, of stuff? A bit. I mean, it's Sunday from 11 to 2 yeah. at the um, high school parking lot. Okay. And <laughs> it's got, you know, food vendors and things like that. Oh. But you get to, like, climb into a fire truck, climb okay. into a digger cool. truck, yeah. things like that. Oh, okay. And you pay to get in. Yeah. And the money is a, um, this one, I think, is Library Foundation. Yeah, it is. Okay. You know, and the one that, the carnival that will start the following week is a... PTA fundraiser. Yeah. Oh, that's and it'll be the first time that a carnival's been back in Hoppington oh, for yeah. nearly 20 years. Well, exactly. It's, it's been less than 20 years because when we, we first moved to town, to once. 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah. I think we went twice, yeah. possibly three times, but it's mm -hmm. been a long, long um, time. Yeah, but it, it had rides them. and everything. Yeah. I know. I told the kids, and they were like, oh, Hopkinton's like going back to old school and doing new stuff. So they yep. really Love get the, excited. Do you remember yeah. the carnival yeah. at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. I, you know, I, I, actual Ferris wheel, you know, it's fun. I remember the carnival because I had a son that loved all the dizzy rides <laughs> and, and their father and I would take turns with him and I got to the point I couldn't ride anymore I was dizzy oh, my God. Like, <laughs> holding the ground and holding the wall going I can't see it so more power uh, to you guys I'll go and I'll ride the the the, the dainty stuff because I can't get dizzy anymore that's funny but it's fun a lot it's of fun. fun stuff good stuff where all the new families have been moving to town and it feels like yeah. What's that? And we're after Memorial Day. So yes, I know. You know we're technically start in the summer going, season. Start wearing white. Summer <laughs> season. And, um, That's your sign. Good stuff. Yeah, good well, stuff. Um, 
So well, what's Sandy Beach open? Has it opened? It, it opens the weekend after school gets out. Oh. So it'll be opening soon. Um, and about three weeks. And yeah. what about, when does the boathouse at the state park oh, yeah. open? Boathouse at the state park is open. It is okay. open. It open, it's it's Memorial Day. It, it, um, it opened technically two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. So, and so there's boating in Boston is open. The state park itself opened Memorial Day weekend. Right. Okay. So you, you could have all, you could still have gotten in to get to the boathouse, but boating in Boston no. has kayaks and stand up paddle boarding and we have and such jewels and that was like staycations yeah. you know no. stay in place <laughs> and have a ball this very is lucky. so great yeah very lucky yep. cool well steve it's been wonderful having you getting to know you more yeah, thank you. And thanks for having me so, yeah so excited yeah. about your upcoming events looking sure. forward to seeing you there grateful Fly for all of them and thanks to oh yes yeah. i'm gonna rock and roll uh, i just yeah. got to give a quick shout out to all the folks in town who have been coming to all these and supporting my my musical habits Absolutely. You know, because it's, it really means a lot. I, I just want to make sure I, I get that in there before we yeah. wrap up. Oh, of course. So, sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you so much I, for all I, that you do. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate all it. Right. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> you will. So bye, everybody. Thanks bye. for joining us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you possibility it starts early before we even know what it is thanks to people who make it happen together we are possibility this show often talks to people who have interesting hobbies or careers or different things that they have going on that affect our community I'm Mary Arnott your host there is a huge need for providing food for individuals and family. And that's the key, that's the key. is yeah. working well together. You can see more episodes online at our website, hkim.tv.